All right, let's call the, uh, the meeting to order. If you will all please stand with me for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, we'll call the meeting uh, to order for this Wednesday, December 19th of the Planning Commission. Uh, if you'll all bear um, with me, I've got a uh, paragraph I have to read with regard to process and procedure for this evening's meeting. Uh, this is a regular meeting of the City of Milton Planning Commission. I'm Paul Moore, Chairman. This is a seven-member commission appointed to the City of Milton Mayor and City Council, or by the City of Milton Mayor and City Council, created for the purpose of holding public hearings and making recommendations on zoning, or rezoning, use permits, concurrent variances, concur concurrent variance applications, comprehensive land use plan and plan map, and other related plans and amendments to the zoning ordinance. I'd like to introduce the members of the um, Planning Commissioner here this evening to my far left, Samit Shaw, Fred Edwards. I'd like to welcome Kurt Nolte uh, as a new, our newest member. Uh, we'll speak to that in just a minute. Uh, to my right, Mark Bittner and Ron Gilbert. Uh, the petitions will be heard this in sequence uh, listed on the posted agenda. I would like to acquaint you with some of the rules and procedures conducting this meeting. The applicants and all those speaking in support of an application will be allowed to, a total of 10 minutes to present the petition. The applicant may choose to save some of the time for rebuttal following the presentation by the opposition. The opposition will be allowed a total of 10 minutes to present its position. If time remains, the opposition will be allowed to rebut. Since the, purpose, since the burden of proof is upon the applicant, the applicant will be allowed to make closing remarks provided time remains with the, within the allotted time. The staff of the Community Development Department will be keeping track of the time and will inform you periodically of the remaining time for your presentation. Each speaker must fill out a speaker card before speaking and leave it with a staff member of the Community Development Department. All speakers will identify themselves by name, address, and organization, if, if applicable, before beginning their presentation. When an opponent of a rezoning action has made within the two years immediately preceding the filing of the rezoning action being opposed, campaign contributions aggregating $250 or more to a local government official by the local government which will consider the application, it should be the duty of the opponents to, to file a disclosure with the governing authority of the respective local government at least five days prior to the Planning Commission meeting. A violation of the relevant state statute con constitutes a misdemeanor. Therefore, if you have contributed $250 or more to a council member and you have not filed a disclosure prior to the Planning Commission meeting, the city attorney strongly suggests you have someone else speak on your point of view. The application has been properly filed with the Department of Community Development. Signs have been posted on each site. The matter has been advertised and the notices have been mailed to property owners affected by this zoning as required by the Milton Zoning Ordinance. The Planning Commission's recommendation will be forwarded to the City of Milton Mayor and City Council for the final disposition. The Mayor, I'm sorry, the City Council hearing will be held approximately three and a half weeks from this hearing on the third Monday of each month at 6 p.m. in these council chambers. The Community Development Department has reviewed each application in conjunction with various agencies and departments, both internal and external to the city. Staff's recommendations, findings, and conclusions are here before us in written form, which has been made available to all petitioners and to the public. Demonstration of any sort within the chamber is prohibited, so please refrain from any applause, dialogue with the person speaking or outburst. Please turn off all cell phones or place them on silent. All remarks will be addressed by the Planning Commission Please show the same respect to the person speaking that you'll expect to receive yourself. In addition, the application, or I'm sorry, the applicant shall not submit material to the Planning Commission during the meeting unless requested to do so by the Commission. All material that you wish to be uh, reviewed by the Commission in consideration of your application should be submitted to the staff of the Community Development Department to be included in the normal distribution of packets to the Commission. Finally, to the applicant, if your petition is deferred in accordance, with, in accordance with the Milton Zoning Ordinance, you are required to update or obtain a new sign for reposting. Failure to update or repost will result in further delay, and there are no exceptions. Um, so um, at this point, it's the opportunity for public comment. 
If there's anyone who would like to speak this evening into the record on a topic that is not listed on our agenda, this is the time to do so. Yeah, I Robin? don't have any. I don't have any general public comment. Okay, then we'll we'll close public comment um, for this evening. Um, so the next item on our agenda is the approval of the action minutes uh, from the October 24th meeting. Hope everybody's had a chance to review them. I would entertain a motion. I'll move that we accept the uh, minutes from the Wednesday, October 24th planning meeting. Okay. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Thank you. Um, I'd like to take a moment before we begin our regular agenda, Robin, and uh, I, don't, I don't see Heather in, Heather in our audience this evening. Uh, we'd just like to thank Heather Sparks, who has been serving on the Planning Commission uh, in the last, uh, approximately the last year. Uh, she has served us well. She brought great guidance to the city and has made a significant, significant contribution to uh, the outcome on the behalf of the citizens. She had a great year for what was going on in the community and represented the community well. We'd like to thank her for her service. Um, we'd also like to welcome Kurt Nolte, our newest uh, member, taking Heather's place. Heather is stepping on to a new responsibility in Forsyth County on a formal basis, which I think is, she's decided is a bit of a conflict and has precluded her from continuing her duties. Um, Kurt is a 20-plus year member of the community from Oxford Lakes, so he's probably the furthest west representation that we have ever had on this uh, on this commission, and uh, Kurt has raised a family of three children here in the Milton schools. All have gone on to uh, make a wonderful contribution as contributing members of society. He and his wife, uh, Julie, um, are a, a real blessing to the community. Kurt has served in, his, in a capacity of homeowners association president or vice president, variety of roles. Uh, he coaches a variety of uh, sports and teams in the in the Milton area and has served our community well. So we welcome Kurt as Peyton Jameson's um, appointee to the Planning Commission. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, so Robin, would you please uh, sound the first item on our agenda this evening? Do I need to read the statement first yeah, before we do that? Yeah, preliminary plat one, yes, please. Okay, so we're hearing a, a preliminary plat this evening is the first item on our agenda. So there's a statement I need to read into the record so everybody understands how we deal with prelim preliminary plats. The Planning Commission is tasked by the city's subdivision ordinance to conduct a public hearing on proposed preliminary plats that have been found to be complete by the Community, Deve by the community Development Department. At the, at the conclusion of the public hearing, the Planning Commission is required to review the proposed preliminary plat and provide comments and make recommendations regarding the plat to the Community Development, uh, community development Director. The Planning Commission does not approve or reject proposed preliminary plats, but merely provides comments or recommendations based on the public hearing and the Planning Commission's review of the proposed preliminary plat. Okay. okay. So, Robin, if you will. Uh, so uh, this item, this proposed subdivision, is named by the developer Old Field. Um, it's located, as you can see on the map, on the south side of Francis, just east of Cogburn Road. Um, it is uh, owned by Georgia Tennessee Development Partners, LLC, and the site planner is Reese Hoops and Venture. It contains approximately 10.2 acres. It currently has a single-family residence on the site. Mm -hmm. And the proposal is for seven single-family lots with a density of 0.69 units per acre, and it is zoned AG1. You might think it looks a little familiar because it is familiar. This uh, property had been before you. Um, I, I believe it actually got to you um, as a private school application, and it was withdrawn uh, about a year, year and a half ago. So this is the site plan. Um, it's fairly uh, simple. There is uh, one road coming in. It's been aligned as uh, close as possible to the opposite subdivision across the street to the north. Um, it preserves the uh, rural uh, Milton uh, view shed. There's 40 foot and then an additional 20 foot and then um, any kind of improvements such as uh, a septic area. 
outside of the, that 60 feet. Um, and as I said, there's seven lots, as you see. Uh, this is a 50-foot setback, which is required by the zoning ordinance uh, for new roads adjacent to property lines. So that's why there's this 50-foot uh, length width along the south. Well, actually, it would be the west. The, uh, west. Thank you. Um, and then further in the back is a detention area. Um, we require it to be as natural as possible. It won't be a bathtub. Um, so that's why it's fairly large in shape. So it won't be very deep, but um, have as naturalistic as possible. Um, <clears throat> and then obviously you see each of these lots. Uh, they've kind of programmed it for uh, a fairly large house and the applicant or the developer is here to answer any specific questions that you might have. And they've kind of also shown that there's room for a pool as well as the primary and secondary septic areas. Um, and they're obviously all one minimum one acre lots. Let's see. Uh, so based on the submitted site plans and supplemental information, the proposed preliminary plat meets the requirements of the applicable city codes as they pertain, pertain to development of this property. So, um, and the applicant has indicated he'll just uh, be available to answer questions and I do have a, a, some people who would like to speak on it. So. Great, thanks Robin. So if the applicant would come forward, please. I think he just wanted to be able to answer questions, unless you have questions. Actually, I've got a couple questions okay. for the applicant. Okay, um, mm -hmm. And there are community member questions as well, yes, Robin? Yes, they have uh, comments. Yeah, I have some comments from the community okay. as well. Thank you. If you would state your name uh, and address for the record, please. Guy Trewanek, I'm the manager of Georgia Tennessee Development Partners. Great, thanks, Guy. Um, actually, just want to go down the down the table. Smith, do you have any questions this evening? I have anything right now. Okay. I just right. have a, a couple of questions. Um, <clears throat> how does the uh, reserve septic field work um, when you have a primary? The reserved is designed as an, an event that the primary fails. So in 10 years from now, for some reason, there's a failure. The, the ordinance requires that you have an land that's been dedicated and carved out. So it's Practic used. Practically, it, it should never be used if your system is, is managed and maintained correctly. But there's always that what if. That's, sure. that's why it's a requirement. Okay, so there's no hookup or anything. It's just there if it's needed. You could then correct the, the pipes. Real, yep. Yes, Except that's correct. The real estate's just that car area. Correct. The real estate's just carved out for the future. The only other question I had, uh, maybe and I'm misreading it uh, on lot number seven. Uh, I tried to figure out where the driveway was into that uh, into that location in the, the garage. So, do you want it to repeat like that question about? Yeah. I mean, it's. Yeah. These, these are yeah. just concept HLPs, house location plans. So, part of the. One of the requirements Milton likes to see is that you've thought it through. We can't say that this is exactly what the house configuration is going to be, but we could most probably will um, run the driveway on the left side of, lot, of that lot. Of that lot. Okay. Correct. Um, one thing I would like to note is in the rear where it says detention, that's stormwater. We are going to make, put our, we're going to handle water quality and stormwater in that location. It's going to be a wet pond, so we're going to uh, dig out probably an extra 40,000 cubic yards of material to create a little pond back there. Uh, so that the intent is to make it really natural, not, we're, we, we're completely against what a lot of folks do, which is just carve out small real estate for detention and it's an eyesore, it's unsafe, it's, you're forced to put a fence around it. And the detention ponds I've done in, in Cobb County and Fulton County, they've all been at features. And unless you're an engineer or, or one of you guys, you're like, you don't even realize that it's a, it's a, it's, it becomes an amenity for the community. So that's the intent of what we, and we've worked with, with, with your Milton engineers to, to try to achieve that. Or we'll work with them. That's all I have. Okay, Kirk. One question: um, The aerial view showed that there were uh, that the plot the plat is uh, is wooded. Um, could you tell speak momentarily about the um, any specimen trees that may be on the lot, 
and uh, also your plan for um, uh, tree canopy? Yes, we um, have done the, all the preliminary calculations on what we to meet the the tr to tree ordinance. Um, once we've developed the um, put the road in, the emphasis on on the the, the tree canopy and, and buffers would be towards the new sub the subdivisions that that we border. Um, we have a 50 foot strip that we have to um, that we have between our road, and we're going to grade and, and plant trees there. But we will. We, we don't have we don't we're not anticipating any problem meeting tree canopy on we have a lot of trees on the site are there specimen trees yes there are and we've surveyed those and we've we're planning how to uh, to replant or to uh, if we can't plant on site we have we'll have another site we'll, we will plant them okay. thank you I'm sorry say the last statement again <clears throat> so you can't put them there or they'll they'll go Right. Our understanding is if we can't plant them, we have to pay the tree bank. But right. we, we've also understand from Milton that if we have another site in Milton, which we're working on, that we could use those trees in that, on the, at that location. Okay. Um, yeah, thank you for that um, consideration. I've got a couple questions as well. Um, one of them had to do with the reference to pond rather than detention, or in fact that it says both. I appreciate the fact that you're contemplating a pond. Right. It's all too often they just become nothing but a, a weed weed farm that's an eyesore and unattended. So thank you for doing that. Um, one of the questions I've got has to do with that access, though. Uh, um, will it be public access to the pond, then? Is that going to be a common area that people can get to? Yes. Uh, first of all, we have to provide access for the city. This, that's a requirement. The city has to have access to all stormwater facilities just in the event of a, a heavy storm. They have to make sure they can maintain it if there's a problem. But yes, the, the, the intent is to um, create a, a walking path or trail, and we're working with the property owner to the uh, to the west, who has four plus acres, and that's in development. And as we as that gets further developed, we'll come forward with another plan. Right now, that has not been nailed down, but the rear yards of lot five, six, and seven, there's an additional four plus acres, and that would be added to this our our amenity concept. I'm sorry, say that last part one more time for me. Behind five, six, and seven, there's additional acreage? There is, and we've talked to the planning department, and, um, and excuse me, we've talked to staff about that, but because we don't have an agreement, uh, a concrete agreement with that, we're not going to present that now, but we would anticipate that we would, uh, if we do get that agreement, which we feel good about, we'd come back before this this group with, with a, a modification to the plan. And... Um, in that potential acquisition, it looks like the parcel immediately adjacent to you is larger than probably that acreage you're referring to. Is that a potential whole parcel in play immediately no. adjacent to you to the east? No, just about four, four acres. Okay. Um, and that's all wooded today? Correct. As well. Okay. Um, so again, my, or my second question is in keeping with the um, question that Ron asked in the common area that's on the what I would <clears throat> determine as the western side of the property that's all pretty heavily wooded today so it's your intention at this point I think I heard you say to clear and grade that so all the trees will go away no no to the west meaning uh, so the, not the on the house side on the opposite side I'm sorry you mean on the opposite side of where the houses are yes no the intent is to, to, to not to grade that we, we might plant additional trees there, but we would not want to disturb that. Okay, great. Um, so common area is just referring <coughs> to the fact that within the treed area, Correct. that will be a green right. space area. Right. Yeah. Can it's be not in our use. best interest to clear that at all. Well, nor is it in ours. So we, right. we, nor we, the neighbors that we bought. Yeah, we'd love to keep it as wooded as possible. Absolutely. Which actually was going to go down the line of my next question, which was um, actually a question for staff. Robin, um, I'm assuming that the placement of the drive primarily is driven by the fact that we're trying to keep it as close to the property access across the street. Correct, as yes. Well. So it's all been driven by that, so yes. Um, and the reason I was asking that is if you were to had the applicant said something other than the fact that he intended to keep most of that treed, I was going to express an interest in trying to find a way to move the street to the other side because the other side is not developed. Yeah, but no, it's, um, it's, it's driven by the engineering, so it has to be there. 
Okay. Um, it's referenced on here, or one of our maps, as a private road. Is it intended to be a private road, or will it be public road for the neighborhood? Right now, the plan is a private road. So, um, gated or ungated? Uh, the plan is to, we're still trying to decide that. We have an option for a gate. We have that gate option. Okay. Um, <clears throat> last question I've got has to do with the the maps that we have got we've got are depicting a four board um, fence and is that the going to run the length of the drive and then also separate all the properties i would anticipate yes i know it's theoretical at this point yes, it's not it, hard it, and fast but is that the it, that's what's depicted on the maps that we've got so yes. if we're trying to present to the community some of the expectations that they should have that's a good look i, I like that look it, it works well in the communities in Milton where they've used that, and we're going to copy that. Have you got a targeted price point at this point for the community? Or square footage? The square footage will be a pro minimum uh, 3,600 square feet. The average price, the starting price point would be 750. Okay. Great. Um, thank you. So I think the only, unless if I can speak on behalf of the <clears throat> commission and please uh, supplement as appropriate. Um, we, number one, appreciate what you're doing. It looks like a, a project that's consistent with um, Milton. Um, we ask that you do seriously consider the minimization of the removal of the trees to preserve the look and feel of what's there today, which is heavily wooded. Um, and then ask that you um, hold true to your suggested word, which is going to be something as a water feature rather than just a detention area. Right. Um, and thank you, Robin. I think at this point, uh, if there's comments from the community, we should entertain yes. those as Press. well. Yes. Unless um, anybody else has any other comments before no. that? No questions. No. Thank you. Thank you. Um, the first speaker is Karen Bottoms. Hi, my name is Karen Bottoms. I live at 14680 Glen Creek Way, just around the corner from the project. Um, Mostly you've attached to his comments what I have. Uh, there's some really nice specimen trees that need to be saved there. You know, it's easy to cut them down, but it takes a long time to grow them back. And we don't want to see just a flat area like it is across from Cambridge High School. Um, on the reserve field, um, I would like to see possibly that be an undisturbed uh, area when they're building these houses out and in the future should the the secondary septic you know needed then they can clear the area but at least it would um, give us a little bit more pervious area for the water to absorb in um, 10 acres is a lot of trees there and if you start cutting them down then we do have water issues and despite the the tension pond and stuff there are issues of water going someplace and if you put a whole bunch of cement and houses and pools and stuff like that, there's no, no place for the water to be absorbed in. And yeah, there's detention ponds, but nevertheless, um, I've seen it where it does go back into the, into the creeks and backs up into the waterways. I'd also like to ask that there be no curbs on the street and that we use swales to help contain the water a bit. Um, let's see. I think that's about really all I have is like just just a little bit more environmental concerns there for not cut it, clear cutting. So thank you. Great, thank you. Okay, the next speaker is uh, Andrew Youngs. My name's Andrew Youngs. I live at 2793 Francis Road, which is immediately adjacent to this property to the east just right there near house number one and number two um, I've lived in this area for only a year and a half but I came to Atlanta from Southern California to escape the crowd <laughs> and it seems like I'm right back in the crowd um, we were looking at homes in closer to the perimeter and then someone said hey take a look at Milton so we did we came out here because of the equestrian lifestyle and the, the ambiance of the rolling open spaces, and I fear that that's in jeopardy. I, uh, 
I knew that this property would be developed, but I had no idea it would be an enclave-type development. I thought that it would be more of an estate-type development. Um, so at any rate, I am not against development at all. In fact, I, I appreciate it and I welcome it, but I, I have concerns about seven homes going in. And it's my understanding that it was suggested to this developer to put in fewer than seven, but that was not, not accepted. I think it might be worth a try again. Now, a couple of things that I have heard today answer some of my questions. As I look at this proposed plat, the homes are just concept homes. So as far as where and what type, or not where, but what type, what they're going to architecturally look like, how I guess we learned today how large they're going to be. But a lot of this is just concept. For instance, the pool, I guess it's just concept two to show that a pool could go in. Um, I noticed that some of the build lines seem to be odd, especially on house number one. We've got build lines that, although house number one, like all the other homes, has a side load garage, that's designated as the backyard. That's rear. So it pushes that house 25 feet closer to my property. I don't know why exactly, except for this entrance configuration, but I was once an engineer and I did a little measuring here. That home can be moved toward the street, further toward the street, and still be within the build lines. Now, a couple other things I wonder about as I read this. It talks about green space, and I take it the green space is the common area along the street. Is that correct? Common area along the proposed street. It also then goes on to talk about green space without park. I have no idea what that means, without park. Where is there a park? Also, I'm wondering about the discussion of the properties mentioned down behind homes four through seven, that acreage. I know those people that live there. We've had discussions about that property. I think it's going to be held pretty close to home now. I don't have a crystal ball, but to think that, oh, yes, we've got the potential to expand further back there, I'm not sure that that's true. So uh, what I'm feeling from this meeting is that this proposal is still, still very much in the infancy stages, and there's a lot to be hashed out. So I'd like to keep on top of this because it's definitely going to affect me. And I just want to say that I, I do have concerns. I understand that it meets all the official guidelines, but I'm not sure that it meets the spirit of Gilton's mission plan and Milton's mission statement. So, something to consider. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, the next speaker is Brian Corman, I believe. Corman. <laughs> That's why. Thank you. Hi, yes, I'm Brian Corman. I am in the Clearbrook subdivision that is directly adjacent to this property. Uh, specifically, I'm on Timber Point, which 14663 Timber Point which is at the very south part of that proposed development, which is where the retention pond is. That, that was your address that you just gave Yes, us. 14663 Timber Point. Okay. Um, Thank you. My concern uh, <laughs> uh, in general is that retention pond because that, and I don't have a topology map, and I'm, I'm not an expert, but I live right there, and there is a creek that comes through there, and that, that area slopes off very severely. Um, I don't know how you would put a retention pond there without building a wall or some huge uh, berm. Uh, the whole property 
slopes. I'm sure there's going to have to be a lot of field dirt and other things to kind of level this out because to me it doesn't even really look, I mean, like I said, I'm not an expert, but it's going to be challenging to build the way it, it drops off. It, it very much slopes, but it already bottoms out into kind of a, a dirty creek area, goes under a road, which is my road, down into uh, Cricket Creek. Um, so the challenge that I see is building a decent looking <coughs> retention pond that doesn't look like it's burned very high, which would be a safety hazard because there are children in my neighborhood. I've got children. And then directly across the street from me is the property that the prior gentleman was speaking to, which is also undeveloped, heavily wooded. So just consideration for that. I know it's not here for today, but it is a very nice piece of property. All of that is heavily wooded and it looks like it's very high density, but my primary concern is that retention pond uh, and making that. I don't see how you could just gradually berm that and have it look natural. You're gonna have to build something pretty substantial to hold that water in the way, the way it drops off. So no further comment, thank you. Great, thank you. That's all the public comment. Okay, thank you. I will close uh, public comment. Um, Robin, I have a question for you based on one of the questions that was um, or one of the comments made by the community this evening, that was the ability for the reserve field not to be cleared. Um, what is our standard um, action on that when it is, is it? I mean, we, we don't have any regulations to that. I mean, typically people like to have a backyard. It would really be up to the developer to put on something on um, the deeds or on the HOA docs to say that, uh, to you know, to put on the plat that certain areas shall be preserved, but we don't have any rules and regulations that that, that would be the case. So it would, it's really upon the developer to make those rules. Okay. It may serve to their advantage if there are specimen trees in those areas to not clear that area with, with regard to the oh, I mean, again, I mean, there may be grading and weather, mm -hmm. you know, depending on the topo and the drainage. And I, at this point, I you know, yeah, it's, it, it's really upon the developer and whether it can work. Um, engineering wise and whether he desires to do that because typically most people want to have a yard so yep. okay thank you um, there was one more question I was going to ask you and it's escaped me for the moment um, any other comments from the the DS. Otherwise, I would, I would just amend my earlier comments to, um, if staff would please carry forward the right. the following things just for consideration as this goes as this plaque goes through the process. Oh, right, here, here this is my question, um, Robin. With the AG one enhancements that we had talked about, um, one of the things that was for, up for consideration was um, trying to minimize. Uh, curb versus swale as suggested so, by I let think me it address that. Ms. Okay. So when you do it, that's called a rural section mm -hmm. and to do a swale and to do no curb requires a larger right of way, 70, 75 feet. So in this particular situation, he's not required to do that and right. it really would not work on this piece of property. Um, yep. So yes, it, it's a possibility for certain properties, but um, in this situation, the way it's designed, it, it, he wouldn't be able to meet the 50-foot right. setback because the right-of-way would be another 25 feet. Um, so. Okay. All right. Well, thank you for the answer to that. Um, so the four notes that I took from the comments from, from the community are, um, again, just for consideration, carrying it forward, whether it's something that can be met or not. If he would just have some of these things carried forward as it's, as it's reviewed. Um, by city engineers and or staff. And one is the use of swales versus curb and gutter. Um, second is the consideration for the engineering on the back end of the property for the slope expressed by, th I think by Mr. Corman, um, concern where the det detention pond is going, whether or not, I, I know it has to be engineered and, and, and staff will do the appropriate engineering. Right, I mean, it all sure has to be engineered correctly, yes. yes. Um, so just make sure that that gets carried forward. <laughs> Uh, third is tree um, preservation to ensure that we've got a good specimen map of mm -hmm. the trees that we would hope to save. And then um, last is just, again, consideration as noted earlier in my comments about the ability to not necessarily clear the reserve fields, if that's okay. possible, for the developer to consider that. 
There's anything that didn't capture that's on anybody else's mind? Okay, just again, just to remind the community, because this is a preliminary plat hearing, we do not make any formal uh, vote on this. We simply su make suggestions that staff carry forward. Yeah, actually you do. We, I think the last time we did take a vote. We, w looking through the ordinance, we would like a, f a vote of, and you can make that, those suggestions and just say that you would recommend it right. continue on and that with these suggestions. So we would like a vote actually. Yeah. All right. Well, then um, I'll ask for a motion to put right. forward those considerations, I guess, Robin, with yeah. the support of the plan as presented. All right. Well, that's not typically a motion that comes from the chair. So if there's a motion that I can have from the table to consider those things. Um, Mr. Gilbert. That's a, I would move uh, forward with it. Oh, I'm sorry. For yeah. approval of this uh, preliminary plat, uh, subject to the uh, the points that the chair uh, outlined a moment ago. Great. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Any discussion? All right. Hearing none. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. That's unanimous. Okay. So I just want I just want to. This reminded me of a situation um, about doing as natural as possible. Um, Sweet Apple subdivision um, on Ebenezer, which um, a few couple of few years ago came about trying to do a conservation subdivision. It, it didn't happen. But um, I spoke to the developer, and he said it's a very interesting situation and that they do have regulations to when they sell the lot that they – develop the subdivision in such a way to preserve as many trees as possible and the least amount of grading. And so basically if somebody comes in looking for a lot and a house and they say, we want a yard, we want a swimming pool, we want to do X, Y, and Z, he says, well, this is not the subdivision for you, mm -hmm. uh, which is kind of amazing actually. Mm -hmm. right. And so, but then there's a lot of people who like and prefer that look as well as I think it's the, one of the few subdivisions in the state if the only one that they have solar um, solar panels on their uh, houses too as well. So they're trying to be as green as possible. But I thought that was a very interesting mm -hmm. um, comment that it's really driven by the developer and how he prefers um, to develop it. I mean, it's a lar much larger piece and they do have some of the, the natural swales and everything, but it is not the place where people want to put their jungle gym and swimming pool, but it's really meant for something that's very natural and um, holistic. So just if you guys want to go out there and look at it, I think it's a great example of being as, you know, natural as possible while still having to put in a septic field and everything right. else. So right. anyway. Great. Thanks, Robin. Okay. All right. If you would please sound the next item. Okay. The next item is RZ 1814 BC 1809. 3475, 3485, 3495, 3499, and 3501, Bethany Bend, by, by, by Bayesian American Properties to rezone from TR and AG1 to TR to develop 54 residential units as a condominium type sale at a density of 6.38 units per acre and a three-part concurrent variance to one, delete the 75-foot undisturbed buffer and 10-foot improvement setback and replace with a 20-foot landscape buffer or 50-foot undisturbed stream buffer adjacent to all property lines abutting property zone TR. And two, to delete the requirement for 75% vertical um, wall plane of brick or natural stone and to delete the requirement for 25% brick tile and remaining materials listed um, in section 641095P. So... Um, let me go ahead and start the presentation, and then um, we'll go from there. Okay. So as mentioned in the um, item number, this is on Bethany Bend Road. It's several parcels being um, put together as one um, right there just above McGinnis Ferry. 
and um, right where the traffic circle is. And uh, Mr. Rowe, who is the engineer for the applicant, has stated that um, AT&T has finally um, moved their lines so they can proceed with the continuation of that construction of that uh, roundabout that is being um, initiated on the Forsyth side with that uh, large mixed-use development. So again, um, as was stated, this is a request to rezone from TR and AG1 to townhouse residential to develop 54 townhomes on 8.46 acres at a density of 6.38 units per acre. And they also are requesting a three-part variance, which we'll discuss later in the summary. Um, there are four existing single-family residences, and it um, is currently zoned AG1 and TR, and specifically I want to speak to the TR zoning that was before you um, in 2008 and a use permit associated with it for senior living at a density, it was approved at a density of 19.84 units per acre. Um, and I believe um, ultimately they got three-story permission. They had came back for a variance for the height um, later on. Uh, so that's what's existing as far as zoning on the TR, and then they've um, and then they've acquired uh, <coughs> options on some other AG1 property. In, in regards to the future land use, um, the area that's already zoned TR is MFR, multifamily residential, that just reflects what is the density, which is a multifamily type density. It's fairly high. And HDR2, which is high density residential 2, which is the higher of the two um, categories, and it's residential 5 or more units per acre. And this property is within the State Route 9 Overlay District. It is not within uh, the form-based code or would not be before you. Oh, I did the wrong one. Okay, as you can see, um, this is the, the zoning map. This little area to the north is the AG1 parcels. This is the blue is the TR. To the south is the ONI, which is the Milton Montessori. Um, we're not seeing what you're, are you? Oh, I need to switch out. Thank yeah. you. I'm sorry. That's right. Too many things. Thank you. There. There we go. Thank you. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Screaming at me like, we tried the phone. what's your problem? We can't <laughs> see <got> anything. <laughs> I turned on the monitors this time. <laughs> That's right. We do add that. Yes. But we were just seeing you <laughs> to the back of your head. Okay. Let me do something. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see if we can ask them to move on. City staff wears a lot of hats, including crowd control. <laughs> it's very echoing in there. So, it's, yeah. Okay. Uh, this is a future land use. And so you can see the dark brown is the high density residential, too. And the ugly green color is the multifamily. So, this is the site plan. Um, it's, as you can see, there's a lot of floodplain, uh, it would be to the west. Um, along this area, and then um, they have their detention. Uh, actually, is that the detention? I will not say whether it's the detention. It's just an open area. And then um, all the different units uh, within the remainder of it, and then you see the uh, roundabout that's under construction, and they also have proposed um, a second entrance right here, uh, a little bit further up the development. Um, in regards to the department comments, the transportation engineer has requested to evaluate, um, has requested a traffic memo to the applicant, and we are still awaiting um, that information, although I think they have some of it tonight. But uh, just to note that the conditions of the zoning would not change based on that information. Um, also, the city engineer wanted to state that the floodplain didn't show all the way over, and it doesn't impact the actual site, but it just is within that other subdivision uh, that wasn't reflected on the site plan. 
Um, the city arborist stated that um, it would this property would be subject to the tree preservation ordinance, including recompense and tree density requirements. Uh, I just want to note that the applicant had submitted the original 2007 tree survey, so we're asking for an updated tree survey because obviously things have grown over the last 10 or 11 years. Um, the fire marshal is just stating that um, the road shall be minimum 26 feet from back of curve to back of curve, or if less, shall be posted no parking signs and curb painted red. In, uh, in regards to public involvement, there was CZIM meeting um, here over at Community Place. There were 11 attendees. They stated concern with increased traffic, that the architecture should be consistent with other homes on Bethany Bend, concern with separation between existing homes and hidden forest subdivision, need to make sure there's some type of protection from car lights entering the subdivision, um, parking for guests where that would be, issues with the future roundabout, and disturbance of existing wildlife and vegetation. In regards uh, to the design review board courtesy review, on December 4th, they liked the proposed development and design of the building, supported the requested architectural variances for the building material, and noted that the requirement for brick does not need to be that the brick does need to be cleaned up. So just looking to staff to um, make a little bit more flexibility in that uh, masonry and brick requirement. Um, in regards to uh, the working with the Hidden Forest HOA to decide on a fence that is compatible for both properties. And in regards to the site plan analysis, um, uh, we'll make these uh, different Statement, staff notes that the site plan shows a variety of unit sizes, grouping size, and architectural design. The majority of larger and wider units are adjacent to Bethany Bend, and the smaller units are toward the back of the property. All of the units are rear-loaded for vehicles, and the site is designed with no dead-end streets. Um, the site provides for a large green open space with walking trails on the southern portion of the site, as well as preserving three specimen-sized oaks. Dispersed within the development are smaller greens for the use of the residents. Based on all the requirements um, that are in your um, staff report, which there was a plethora of them, the site plan indicates compliance with the development standards for the TR residential district. Um, and the applicant is requesting concurrent variance is, and they are actually to the State Route 9 overlay district. And when we look at a variance, they must be based upon credible evidence submitted um, to staff with one through four. The first application or first request is to delete the 75 foot undisturbed buffer and 10 foot improvement setback and replace with a 20 foot landscape buffer or 50 foot undisturbed stream buffer adjacent to all property lines abutting property zone townhouse residential which is basically uh, primarily the Hidden Forest property. The applicant has stated that they will install a fence along the abutting property lines to Hidden Forest and provide a landscape plan to help ameliorate the impact of the proposed development. On the site plan, there are areas adjacent to the units 48, 45, 44 through 40, which there's additional room to increase the landscape buffer to 35 feet. In addition, the proposed 54 units at an overall density of 6.38 is consistent with the 2016 comprehensive plan update and compatible with residential properties to the west and northwest. Based on these facts, staff recommendation is that if this request is granted, it would not offend the spirit or intent of the zoning ordinance. The site is comprised of six parcels of various sizes and shapes that create an 8.46 acre parcel that is narrow, odd shaped, and contains approximately 1.4 acres of floodplain on the site. Therefore, it is staff's recommendation that because of these facts, there are extraordinary and exceptional situations or conditions pertaining to this piece of property that the literal or strict application of the zoning ordinance creates an unnecessary hardship due to size, shape, and the floodplain not caused by the applicant. Relief would not cause a substantial detriment to the public good and surrounding properties and that the public safety, health, and welfare are secured and, substan and substantial justice is done if approved with the HIP following conditions to require a fence adjacent to Hidden Forest based on, in it, um, you know, basically based on discussions between the two parties, an increased landscape buffer adjacent to the above mentioned lots, an agreed landscape plan with abutting property owners. Therefore, staff recommends approval conditional of VC 1809 Part 1. 
In regards to parts two and three for the um, brick and natural stone requirement and for um, the accent materials, uh, the applicant is requesting relief from the required building materials for townhomes to this requirement. The subject site is located within the State Route 9 Overlay District, which includes parcels on Bethany Bend going north towards State Route 9, which is the only area left in the Deerfield area, and State Route 9 not included in the Deerfield form-based code approved by the City Council in 2015. The applicant is requesting the above two port concurrent variants in order to design the townhomes with a less heavy look of the predominantly brick and stone that is required by the State Route 9 Overlay District. Below are sketches that demonstrate the intent of the look as well as the massing and form. So. The applicant's architect has worked closely with the city architect to achieve the most appealing and updated design for the area. The applicant intends to incorporate some brick and stone in the design of the townhomes, but does not intend to utilize the requirements per vertical wall plane or the accent materials. The city architect continues to work with the applicant to provide more detailed designs, elevations of the materials for the buildings. Although the applicant has provided good design for the project and work with the city architect, but does not meet all four of the considerations when evaluating a variance. The applicant has not demonstrated the following consideration. Number two, there are such extraordinary and exceptional situations or conditions pertaining to the particular piece of property that the literal or strict application of the zoning ordinance would create an unnecessary hardship due to size, shape, or topography, or other extraordinary and exceptional situations or conditions not caused by the variance applicant. Therefore, staff did not recommends denial of VC 1809 parts two and three. If the mayor and city council recommends approval of parts two and three, staff recommends that all architecture be approved by the city architect prior to the submittal to the design review board, which for townhouse attached um, products have to go to the design review board before a building permit can be approved. In regards to the standard of your review, um, whether the zoning proposal will permit a use that is suitable in view of the use and development of adjacent and, of adjacent and nearby property. So as we see here, um, the subject site is the beige and the blue here. Below to um, in the pink is the uh, Milton Montessori. Um, to the east is the mixed-use development in Forsyth with um, very large amounts of multi-use as well, multi-family as well as single family. And once we believe once the uh, the inter interchange is built on at McGinnis and 400 that they will begin on the commercial piece of this corner. Um, to the west is uh, Hidden Forest. Further uh, to the southwest is let me check my cheat sheet is Fairview Townhomes. Um, at 6.25 units per acre. The um, apartments further to the south, IMT Deerfield, are at 12 units per acre. If we go um, further to uh, the northwest, which is Spring Valley, they're at 7.86 units per acre. And then um, a little bit further northwest is Windcrest at 6.76 units per acre. Whether the zoning proposal will adversely affect the existing use or usability of adjacent or nearby property. <coughs> Is staff's opinion that the proposal will not adversely affect the existing use of the adjacent properties as described above if approved with the recommended conditions. The proposed development is within the range of existing approved densities and uses in the area. Whether the property um, to be affected by the proposal has a reasonable economic use is currently zoned. The subject site may have a reasonable use based on the AG1 and the TR for the senior housing. The proposed development may have some impact on existing streets, transportation facilities, and schools, a roundabout that is under construction at the entrance of the project, as well as the additional entrance on the northern portion of the site will help ameliorate the increase in traffic in and out of the subject site, 
All three schools will be impacted by the proposed development. This area is currently zoned for Cambridge High, Hopewell Middle, and Cogburn Woods Elementary, and all schools are currently over building capacity, and the project will increase the number over capacity as indicated um, in the report uh, from the school board. In regards to if the zoning proposal is in conformity with the policies and intent of the land use plan, the future land use plan, as I stated before, is multifamily residential and high HDR2 uh, at five units per acre or more. Um, the proposed use is 6.38, which would be consistent with that recommendation, as well as um, uh, various uh, policies regarding housing, the types of housing, um, housing opportunities, uh, various uh, choices in housing patterns, and uh, increased opportunities for more affordable owner-occupied housing. In regards to um, whether there are other existing or changed conditions affecting the use and development of the property, um, since the last approval for a senior housing use permit in 08 at a density of 19.84 units per acre, the applicant has included additional acreage, but the amount of floodplain has increased on the site. Secondly, the proposed density is 6.48 units per acre, which is a significant decrease from the existing approved zoning. In addition, there is a mixed-use development under construction on the east side of Bethany Bend and Forsyth, which includes apartments, single-family homes, and future commercial uses directly across the street. Lastly, there is a roundabout under construction which will serve as the primary entrance. Therefore, it is staff's opinion that these change conditions affect the use and development of the property, which supports recommended approval of the proposed rezoning. The proposed use will not be environmentally adverse to the natural resources environment and citizens of the city due to the required development regulations as it pertains to stormwater facilities, tree recompense, and open space requirements. Therefore, it's staff's opinion that the proposed rezoning from TR and AG1 to TR to develop 54 townhomes is consistent with the 2016 future land use plan update and plan policies as well as providing an appropriate transition from lower density to higher densities to the north and east. Therefore, staff recommends approval conditional of RZ 1814 and approval conditional of 18, uh, VC 1809 Part 1 and denial of Parts 2 and 3. In regards to the recommended conditions, it would be for townhouse attached dwellings um, and no more than 54 dwelling units at a maximum density of 6.38. Um, also, it would, should be in substantial, substantial compliance with the site plan received by our department on October 30th. And um, all areas which are not part of an individual lot and held in common shall be maintained by a mandatory homeowners association. And um, in regards to the uh, variance, um, provide a 20-foot landscape buffer adjacent to property zone TR. Um, and provide a 35-foot landscape buffer where no alley is shown on the site plan adjacent to TR, and a 50-foot undisturbed stream buffer adjacent to property, adjacent to TR, townhouse residential, in regard with hidden forests. Design and plant selection shall be approved by the city arborist. Provide a fence along the property line abutting single-family residential structures within hidden forests. Subdivision is approved by the design review board. And then in regards to... Um, Requirements, dedications, and improvements, access to the site and frontage improvements shall be subject to the approval of the City of Milton Department of Public Works, and then provide sidewalks internal to the development and along entire Bethany Bend frontage and connecting to existing infrastructure on adjacent parcels as required or approved by the City of Milton Public Works. And so I'm here to answer any questions after that lengthy presentation. Um, so... And then we do have comments from, and we'll have the applicant um, do their presentation, but if you have any direct questions right now, I'd be happy to answer those. Okay. Anyone have questions for staff at this point? No. Thanks, Robert. Okay. We'll look forward to, as need be, after the applicant. Okay.
Good evening. Uh, Steve Rowe with AEC 50 Warm Springs Circle, Roswell, Georgia. Um, Robin has done such a masterful job on the site plan and, and going through it. Anything I would tell you would be a repeat of what she's already said, so I'd rather answer questions you may have regarding the site plan, and if you don't have any, I can turn it over to Kerry Kraus, our building architect, to walk through the, the necessity for the architecture variances. Anybody, anybody have any questions for Mr. Rowe? Oh, yeah. And we will. <laughs> right, and, and, I'll, and I'll reserve the rest of my time for rebuttal. So okay. thank you. Why don't we then have Ms. Krause uh, speak? Right, so thank you. Hello, my name is Carrie Krause. I am the architect um, who conceptualized the neighborhood. And um, we probably don't need that. Just probably go straight to the architecture, the renderings. So this community was designed. Um, with Milton's vision um, to have diversity of economics, diversity of um, family dynamics. Um, and so the variance of the 75% masonry became vital. It became an important issue for us um, to accommodate not only getting the architecture to um, have a diversity of price points um, within the units themselves, um, but also became important aesthetically. When you look at what's happening um, in architecture today within Alpharetta, within Buckhead where I reside, um, within uh, Forsyth County, you're seeing a lighter feel, um, less heavy uh, masonry. And that being said, uh, I think the most important a component to making that aesthetically pleasing and long-term classically relevant to architecture is having each unit consistent. So what we've seen in the past, and you can drive all over around here, you'll see a facade of brick on the front and you'll see siding of some sort on the sides and the back. That's nothing that we want to recommend and nothing we want to see in our community. Um, we have kept the integrity of each unit, even though they share common walls, we kept the integrity of each unit to look aesthetically unique. Uh, we created a village effect, if you will. And you're seeing this all over. You're seeing it at Voice, you're seeing it at Vickery, you're seeing it in downtown Alpharetta. Um, this is a very appealing, relevant way of approaching um, multifamily. So, or townhomes, I should say, specifically for this zoning. So that being said, um, I did partner with um, Tracy Ward, who I'm sure all of you are very familiar with. He's done a lot of work in your community. And we've created um, a community we're very proud of. And the design review board that we presented to on the 4th was extremely impressed and inspired by the project as well. It is different from the what has code, 75% masonry but it is aesthetically relevant and classically oriented in architecture. So that being said, we do have a lot of very interesting masonry applications. We have um, fireplaces, we have water tables, we do have some units completely all stone, some units completely all brick. Um, what we did do is infiltrate some um, shiplap siding um, some um, board and batten, and some other architecturally relevant um, design to Milton. I, I, I heavily researched Milton's history. Um, I'm not from here, but I did take an interest in it, agriculturally, um, and the equestrian lifestyle. Uh, the aesthetic to the community basically embraces the history of Milton. I don't know when the brick and the heavy masonry became part of your um, plan or part of your aesthetic, but um, I can say when you look back um, at photography, you look back at old designs, I went um, through um, quite a bit of the plans that were approved through different periods of time here in Milton. There is some relevance to what we're doing to your history. So. That being said, uh, we are requesting um, a variance on the 75% for multiple reasons. So I'll let you ask questions at this point, um, if you have any. I had a question about, so you were saying price points. So what, mm -hmm. what, what do you think the, the difference in the price points are? Fantastic question. So, um, excuse me, I'm sorry. It'd be easier for them to finish it and then to ask questions because I want to see if there's anybody from the audience as well. Okay. And then okay. we Thanks can go back to the applicant. Okay. okay. So disregard the question 
Or I mean, you can go ahead. <laughs> I stopped the clock. But for, so, yeah. so to answer your question, um, what's really cool about this community, um, and you know, I'll, I'll run you through these slides, the widths are very different. So you know how a lot of townhome communities, I'm sure you've seen them, they are just like a row of one elevation, and it's the same exact width in each unit. This is completely unique. We have some that are 20 feet wide, 24 wide, 30 wide, 35 foot wide, 45 wide, and 50 wide. So we created a lot of complexity and layers to this community. Um, and that being said, too, to answer your question, we to get that diversity of uh, family dynamics, we have a lot of the units can have a master level en suites on the first floor as well as living. Um, so a lot of that was thought through, but with having those 20 foot units and those 24 foot units sprinkled in between the larger units, that's what creates that, that income diversity, that, that economy diversity. So you can look at a unit in the middle, a three-story little unit in one of the town rows, I call them the town rows in the back. Um, here we go. You can see that right there, that that unit will more than likely rest somewhere depending on the market and when this project goes, um, launches, but that can rest anywhere from 450, 500, and then some of these wider units can go as high as 700 to 800. So it's been designed intentionally to allow that, eco that um, economic diversity. So I'll just flash through all these. That one on the end um, is, is one of the 50 foot units. And then you see in the back, we did um, keep more of the row house feel, the smaller units to the back, so that from the street, which was very important to the city architect, um, he had a lot of say, um, and we certainly listened and actually accommodated all his feedback. We kept the front um, nicely sized and oriented to the street, lots of sidewalks. Um, it's definitely pedestrian friendly. And uh, so, any other questions? So we need to keep the questions until after. Hold the questions. Yeah. Okay. But you're more than welcome when we get to questions to answer them. So, But if you're done with the presentation. Okay. So do I, anybody else want to speak from the community? Anybody here? Okay. I just want to make sure. I don't want to leave anybody out. Are you asking for in favor, Robin, or in opposition? Or in opposition. So I, I only have cards. Um, uh, from the applicant and their engineer and architect. So I just want to make sure if there was anybody else who wanted to speak that I didn't get the card. Okay. So we have no other speakers. Okay. We'll close public comment. Okay. Um, okay. So questions from the from the table for staff or for the applicant. I had a question for staff about the – so in the presentation, obviously, it said that already the schools are – over capacity mm -hmm. and again with this development that's not going to help the situation so I mean what you know what what can we do, what can we do about that or what is a recommendation with the school system how do we address something like that because it's but it's already over capacity and more development's right. going to come what are we going to do about that uh, to be honest, we can't, I mean, it's, it's a oh consideration in your decision, but it can't be the sole reason for a recommendation of denial. I believe that that, you know, so the schools, um, if I look at the numbers, the estimated generated students for Cogburn Woods is three to 15. That's a huge guess. Like, I don't know where they come up with these numbers. Uh, but the Hopewell Middle School is zero to eight, um, and then the high school is one to 14. So it's a huge range. It's not, uh, but it's just something that the Board of Education planners have to deal with. And they can, as far as I understand, they can only plan with what's on the ground and the existing um, number of children. So, um, and to be honest, I think I've mentioned this before, the demographics are, especially for the elementary side, is that the number of children being born, if you look at the demographics, are going down. And I'm not saying, you know, obviously there's people moving into the city or into the school districts, um, but it's... I believe it's not as such a huge issue as it maybe was 10, 15 years ago where you just had, you know, my kids are in college now and all my friends had hordes of kids and now everybody's having one or two. So um, 
that's just something to think about. If you if you look at articles in the Milton Herald, the Board of Education state that the demographics are changing and the number of children per household are going down. Um, but again, it's a long answer to your question that we really can't make a decision solely based on overcapacity of the schools. So, but I do have communication with the app, with the school planner, um, and it's really difficult in Milton because we don't have a lot of rezonings. We just have development, so a lot of times they get the knowing what's coming down the pike with the rezoning request, whether it's Roswell or Alpharetta or Johns Creek, and so in our case. I try to do the best as possible to get give them final plats like Francis Road. I mean, they had no idea that that might become seven lots, um, and that's not a decision. There's no decision made whether that should be approved based on the number of children that would be produced out of that subdivision. So, anyway. Okay. That was it, Smeet? Yeah. Okay. Fred, any questions? Uh, <clears throat> yes. Um, do the uh, private drives, I, I think you said, um, have the uh, sidewalks, that you intend to have sidewalks? I'll have the applicant come up, uh, the engineer. On the internal drives, we're going to have more um, unit access sidewalks, but maybe not at all connecting in the center of it mm -hmm. because it would eat into more of the green space we want. We want to save the sidewalks and the walkability more for the, the specific areas we want, like within the parks, within the, the general uh, green space locations. Let me see if I can get to that image here. So we would probably have a sidewalk network through here, uh, another little sidewalk network here. You can see the sidewalks along the front will connect out and through. And we'll connect our green spaces, but there may not be a sidewalk to every square inch of this. Uh, the one thing I did want to point out is there is a nice network of green space within the floodplain, so we would kind of work in a, a natural mulch trail through there uh, for dog walk areas, just, just nature enjoyment. Okay. Do you have an intended speed limit for what's customary in a, in a development uh, like this? Since these are all uh, going to be low speed roads, there's probably going to be some paver areas for stormwater quality and some things along there. So, I mean, we're thinking 15 miles an hour or less. It, it's going to be very, very low. Right. As it relates to um, the sidewalks, um, Fire Marshal indicated a minimum of 26 feet. Uh, and in two instances, we're at 26, then we're at 22. Yep. Um, we're, we're intending no on-street parking in the fronts of these, these units. So all the parking will be either in garages, driveways, uh, or in the alleys themselves. So we won't have any, there'll be no on-street parking within the areas where the fire marshal needs access. Okay, and to that, since you mentioned fire marshal, um, and looking at the print um, on the private drive on, in the middle, um, I don't see a way if a uh, emergency vehicle is at location one or 54, uh, the ability to turn that emergency vehicle around. We've, we've actually created areas where there's, where there's more than 150 feet where they can't back up. There's alley areas where they can back into the alley and pull out, uh, similar to this location, same thing. And then over here, we've got the, a similar situation where actually they could traverse through that alley if they needed to. Okay, so what is the reasoning for the alley? Um, for rear garage access, we want the fronts of the units to be clean architecture without garage doors. We're trying to tuck all the garage doors to the back. And just um, to say that any any um, townhomes that front a public street like Bethany Bend, they have to be rear loaded. Mm, right. But that was just some. That's what we have in form based code. So we're just kind of trying to. Okay. So even though it, now is that alley going to be a paved? Yes. Yeah, it'll be paved. Yeah. Yes, it will be paved. What's the width of the alley street? 
Is it 12 feet? Is the alleys are anywhere from 12 to 15, but a lot of times we'll do grass pavers in excess of that for maybe some off street parking if the fire marshal does need to get back there so it's a little wider drive mm -hmm. surface. But we're trying to keep the, the, the pavement to a minimum as much as we can. How have you provided for uh, visitor parking? Um, a lot of the areas, a lot of the garages are, are in excess of 18 feet, so we can fit two cars side by side in, in, the, in the garages. Um, in the alleys, we're going to work in some on-street or parallel parking in the alleys where we can't fit, fit a deep enough space. But we're trying to keep all of the parking off the streets in front of the units themselves. If, if there was parking in those areas that you suggest, um, uh, would emergency vehicles be able to transit the neighborhood as you just described yes we would make sure that any any uh, parallel spaces would be off of the the actual drive surface so they would be set off there's only one area where the, the fire marshal may need to get back and it would be in this alley here i'm not right. sure if you can That's see what my, you pointed to yeah would be this area but these are where we have long driveways so we may be able to fit all the guest parking off the driveway or, or off the, the alley itself and again those are some of the details we work out as we go through the permitting process with the fire marshal Okay, because at first blush, it doesn't seem like that much. Right. Okay, okay. answered the driveways. Um, were streetlights um, proposed in this? We'll have, we'll have streetlights. We just haven't gotten to that granular level of detail okay. yet. And as we, as we permit it, we'll have to show full photometrics, so... That's all I have at this time. Okay, Kurt. Uh, I guess I just had more of a clarification when it comes to density. Right now, the way I see this is there's, based on zoning, there's really two parcels. You know, one is AG1. Right. That's, you know, roughly, what, about three and a half acres? Th there and about, yes, sir. And then we've got the townhomes, which is roughly five acres. Right. Um, and it's my understanding that based upon the senior housing, that that it is currently zoned on the five acre land for 19.84 residences on that. Correct. Mm -hmm. And on the AG1, obviously with three, you're looking at maybe three homes. So, you know, if I do the math, it, you know, based on the way it's zoned today, there could be 103 residences, including senior family. That's correct. And I think by changing the AG1 and removing the senior residencies we're going to 54 residences that's correct and i think too when you start looking at the milton comprehensive plan that says that it's okay to have five or more right per, so so i guess i i kind of view this and it's more of a sanity check of this is in a lot of ways <laughs> density neutral to me you know because you had 103 which included a vast majority of elderly right. which is one or two habitants now you've got 54 which is Families three, you know, right. two, three plus. So I, I kind of see this as, as density neutral when it comes to that. Yeah, and, and I think the scale of this development is going to be a lot less than the the intensity of the senior is going to be. The senior is going to be a stacked flat product, which is a little bit more intense with parking underneath. So this this is going to be a little less impact to the to the area. Okay. Um, let's see what else today. And yeah, um, I think we heard about the. <coughs> The requirement for the vertical, wall, the seventy-five percent vertical wall plane. Um, right. I think the we're, the main result of that is to give it a lighter look. To we're trying to give it a lighter look and be, be more in keeping with the vernacular of the historic Milton area of the farmhouse look, and a little less of the heavy. I mean, the masonry is is good, and it's, and if it's used strategically within the architecture, I think makes a lot of sense. But to to mandate seventy-five percent of it just makes it a very heavy heavy look that, that we really want to be more in keeping with the surrounding residents around us. Okay. Um, I think, and the other question I have is I know on some of the drawings it shows potential trees, and it looks like mm -hmm. the area is fairly heavily treed now. It is. There's a lot of uh, volunteer pines along a lot of the areas. The one thing I did want to point out is there's a, there's a large grove of, of water oaks in this area that we are preserving in front of the stormwater management area, That's and fine. those will be saved. And, and as, as we speak, we're having the, uh, the tree survey updated. Um, so we're going to assess the health. And so if there's other trees that we can work around within the site, we'll do that as well. Okay. It only That's helps. What, that was one of the citizens' concerns. If you look yeah. at the drive-in, 
you know, it goes straight through to the to the homes behind that. Right. I know one of the things was how do you cut down the, you know, the right. street or the con lights? Well, the, the neat part about the way the, the site will grade, this is actually a slope down. Okay. So this will be up at street level. The garages will be a drive under garage. So then the, the headlights will be looking into this park area and then we'll have heavy landscaping to the back. So I really don't think there's going to be any issue with visibility between between those two developments. Okay. I'm sorry, would you say that again about where the drive under uh, garage? Uh, in these areas, this the grade is falling through here naturally towards Hidden Forest. Uh -huh. So these would be up at Bethany Road and then the garages would be located under, up underneath behind. So they would actually, I would lose a eight feet of, nine feet of grade there, so I would be able to, to tuck that. But it helps with the way the cars would, would maneuver and so you don't have headlights just streaming out into nowhere. That's all I have, thanks. Okay, thank you. Is it, the, you said this was it's like similar to the other one. Is it private roads? Is it going to be gated? These will be private roads, but, but we cannot gate it. Cannot gate it? Okay. And will this be done? I mean, I'm, I couldn't know this, the, the, the circle or the roundabout. Will that be done before <laughs> this is started? I, 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 I'm praying. I, I, well, how, suppose I, it's not. I mean, I guess for, maybe that's, suppose it's not. Well, done. Let, me, we, let me give you a little history because unfortunately I'm, I'm the engineer of the roundabout okay. and, and, and have, <laughs> I know more than I should about it. <laughs> um, AT&T was a little bit of a holdup in moving some yeah. of their poles. They, they actually yesterday finished doing that work and turned it back over to, to my client who's going to finish the construction. Uh, we're trying to get the contractor on board and get it started, but once he starts, they're, they're about five months out from getting it totally finished, buttoned up, landscaped, and paved. Okay. So I think probably within the next four to six weeks, you'll see construction start, and I think by early summer, we'll be done and out of there. Okay, so that, that will be done. Before... That, will be, that will be ahead of our schedule, okay, absolutely. Nice. Okay. Thank you. Because because our access is critical with that circle yeah. be done. <laughs> in uh, during the preamble to your presentation, it was mentioned you might have a traffic study you could uh, could share. We're um, we've done some traffic counts. We've got some monitoring. Our impact to that to that intersection is 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 less than about four percent. Um, but right now, I'm going through trying to get some modeling done of the the traffic circle, which is a little bit more intense. So I'm working with Sarah at the city, and we're we're working through what the parameters of that modeling needs to look like, so she can get a comfort level of it, so our ingress and egress. The measurements that you took, uh, when did you take them? Uh, the the traffic counts from Bethany Road and Morris Road came uh, last year, about this time, so they're about a year old. Uh, married that against our our. Uh, the ITE numbers for our traffic input for an average daily trip and for the peak hours. Um, I realize that traffic on that road is a little little rough in the mornings, rough in the afternoons, but a lot of that's partly per from construction, and, and a lot of it is, is well, I think, as the construction moves on and this circle gets into place, that will help alleviate some of those issues. Um, I'd like to... So I'd like to go back to your uh, the request of the applicant to eliminate the um, undisturbed buffer and the improvement setback. Yes. And I don't understand the reason for the uh, request. When you, because of the shape of the property, and the, when, when you take the 75 feet, which is really an overlay requirement, not a not a zoning requirement per se between two zoning, because we're very similar zoning districts between these two. It moves this line from, from here to almost at this road. Mm -hmm. So it makes it so the economics of the development don't work and then the grading and everything else, it becomes almost impossible to get a development in there with what I'm left as a sliver mm -hmm. running through there. Uh, it renders this piece almost totally undevelopable. Uh, parts of this become very difficult. And so it's, it's really a development issue um, and, and we're trying to honor the, the buffer between the two developments. We're working with Hidden Forest, so as we, as we come up with landscape plans, we found that, that each of these different homeowners has a different like, tone, and tenor of what they want to see there. So we'll be working with each one of them so that the buffer behind their house will be in what, what they're looking for, whether it be magnolias, cryptomerias, you know, different just, landscape just, material. It just strikes me that um, the folks that bought those houses anticipated that there were going to be these sorts of buffers there. And um, uh, un undoubtedly, your client knew this when um, the requirement for the buffers when the property was purchased or assembled. Can I, I uh, interject? So the previous application for the use permit, they also asked for the variance for the buffers. So what happens, though, is if a development is not 
constructed or started within 36 months, they lose the variance. Mm -hmm. So in the previous application, the same variance was requested and it was granted in 2008 for the previous mm -hmm. required <coughs> previous development proposal. But obviously this is a new proposal, so it is a new situation, but just want to clarify that right. um, even uh, those houses were being built around the same time as the rezoning, and maybe some of them were occupied after the rezoning. Right. So, um, anyway. I, I, you know, I, I'm still having, well, I understand the history. Thank you very much for that. I, did, I wasn't aware of that before you, uh, you, you, you shared it. Um, but I'm still having difficulty understanding why um, the applicant, uh, who, who, in part, it's, it's the logic of your the reason, rationale for, for accepting this um, or recommending approval for it. Um, you cite the irregular nature of the property. Um, uh, I believe you cite also the wetlands. Um, those were all there when the when the applicant bought the property. And I, 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 I'm, I'm just having difficulty understanding why we should grant this. Uh, I, it doesn't strike me as a hardship if he knew uh, he was cobbling together something that uh, looked like and is this. And is the development contingent upon the variance? Is it, a, is it a contractual arrangement? So if the variances are not granted, the sale will not go through. Is it contingent yeah. upon? I wanted the to speak a little bit about that hardship um, because I spoke at I've spoken at length with Bob, the city. You might um, want to get director. closer to the. Um, I wanted to speak on the hardship case because I'm not sure if you're aware um, the zoning and the foreign base zoning around this area. There's only a couple left land areas left that kind of fell in this weird situation where they weren't foreign based zone and they're stuck in where they are which is almost neverland you know um the property is shaped oddly um Stephen, <laughs> Stephen and i have you know created so many different site plans to this to make this work without the buffer but it is impossible to do anything substantial um other than using density, which is not anything we want to do. And we have it. I mean, we have approval to have massive, uh, uh, an extreme amount more density to this land. Um, but we're trying to avoid that. We're trying to create some... Senior housing? Senior housing or even, um, I believe we're um, within the current zone. We were allowed up to nine um, per acre, and we're only using... Five, six, well, on the, six. On the, um, six on the TR eight. section, but not the AG one. Yeah. yeah right. So, a qu a right. question for staff: If this does not proceed for whatever reason, what can they build on this property today by right? So it would it would be the they have the use permit um, for the senior housing with the TR. Um, they would probably, they would have to go back to the board of zoning appeals to ask for the same variance for the um, for the buffer because that has uh, gone away with the time. Uh, but they have, they preserve their right for the density of the senior housing. And I just want to say, and I think Mr. Um, Jones is going to say, is it's the same property owner. They've had this property the whole entire time. So there is no contingency with anybody. This is their property they're trying to do. Uh, if I could just address that for a moment. Um, Corey Jones, I live at 14430 Wyndham Farms here in Milton. Um, so we, we assembled this in 2007. We brought it through zoning for its current entitlement. Um, we did not close on the property until it was entitled. So we had it under contract. It took me 18 months to bring everything through. City Council approved it, and then within three or four weeks, we actually closed, and we, so we owned it at that point. Um, so we did not just buy it and hope that we would be able to build something on it. We got it entitled, and consequently, it was 2008, and the economy did this, and we got stuck uh, with it, and we've been stuck with it this whole time, and we're looking at, you know, it's difficult to build um, a senior development there because there's really nothing to walk to right now. Eventually, and we knew there would be back then, restaurants across the street, retail shops, I mean, that type of thing, um, but without that there, we struggle and the expense of building something like what we're entitled to build. So we're just looking at this. We're not, one of the things you'll notice is we're not stuffing it with density. 
It's a very beautiful, um, in fact, Carrie Krause, an environmental architect, and I really gave her the reins. I said, make this beautiful. Make it somewhere where people really want to live and can be a village. So. Thank you. Yeah, the green, the green spaces were extremely important to me as an environmental architect. They are scattered all throughout this community, this development, um, places where, you know, instead of having to go to a centralized park, like a lot of developments are designed, we created these little moments all throughout where neighbors within that space can, can come together. Um, so because of that, we did not use the amount of density that we have um, at our disposal. Um, so that buffer is extremely important, that variance. Um, it's interesting how we're talking about green space within this buffer, but in order for us to have green space within the community itself, we need that variance. So. Yeah. Is, the, I'm sorry. is the green space that you're intending, uh, Ms. Krause, the natural green space? Will it be a groomed well, area, or is it, it going to be? It's both. We'll, we'll have this natural green space here, which won't be improved except for some trails. But then we'll have some more manicured parks within it, uh, kind of for passive recreation, maybe some slight active recreation, you know, throwing a baseball, football. So what's the frisbee. largest The largest area looks like the uh, area just in line sight line from the roundabout coming in yeah we've got a nice well, linear park here uh there's also a nice one here it's, it's a little deceiving because the units are so much bigger but this is is probably even a little bigger than this this okay. park and is what's about, the what kind of space are we talking about is that uh, yeah quarter of an acre or is it yeah this is about this is about 100 120 by probably 150 uh this is probably 80 by 150 and then probably 60 by 150 through here and you're showing them as treed here, yes. but you also then talked about it a moment ago about it being a potential for active, active use area. Well, it's it's you see we've got a, a, a sidewalk through there, but then there'll be some green spaces to the side and some some flat lawn areas uh, worked within these. Again, we haven't gotten to the granular level of detail on these, but just just some ideas of, of these are improved spaces meant for the enjoyment of the residents and and also to help break up the facades of the units as you run down Bethany Road. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you where I, where I struggle a little bit, and I and I I understand completely when you're at this point of your development, mm -hmm. you can only have anticipated so much. But when you're the, so the challenge we've got as a planning commission is to ensure that when we're being asked to grant a variance for something, that we get some pretty absolute answers out of those. Mm -hmm. So we have to blend those two needs. Mm -hmm. Your need to be conceptual at this point, and our need to be as granular and as absolute right. as possible when we're suggesting, okay, we're in support or in, or we're going to deny something based on those um, absolutes, especially when a variance is required. Right. So I, I please understand some of our hesitance or maybe the line of questions that some of us are going. No, no, no. It's, it's this is because we have to overcome that battle. That's, yeah. that's the challenge that we're given as a planning commission is to right. ensure that we're one level of protection for what the community is expecting. And, and we've been working hand in hand with the community members behind us to make sure that they're they're in concurrence with it and they understand why and, and that they're happy with the end result. It's, it's as important mm -hmm. to us as it is to them yep. and you. May I add uh, something <clears throat> toward the hardship uh, question? Um, when we closed on this property, the floodplain was further down. And so we actually had a lot more buildable area where you see the blue pond right now. Um, that is actually the very edge of the floodplain now. In 2000, 2013, FEMA changed the floodplain. They raised it on us. So we, we lost about um, another acre. About, a, about an acre of our building area. So we closed on this thing, believing we had so much space. And then because of the recession, it hit us. We couldn't control it. 2013, FEMA did that. We couldn't control that. We lost another acre. So it's, it's been one hardship after the other, actually. I think it's also important for you guys to know that um, before we even designed Malou, we met with the um, community of Hidden Forest and a Kroger as just a community um, event, just to let them know what we're thinking about, to ask, you know, give them a, an, a, an, a platform to communicate what they want to see. So we've, um, we've had three 
I believe three meetings, like town hall esque meetings with our neighbors. And um, so, yeah, this this buffer didn't come e this this variance request didn't come easy by us, but we really are at um, at a crossroads on it. So. Yeah. Ron, more questions? No, I think I've heard enough. Okay, um, I have several. Okay. Um, I guess one of my first questions is, at the, at the point of groundbreaking, is it your intent to develop 100% of it, or is it going to be a phased um, development? Um, we would probably develop 100% of the infrastructure, the roads, the stormwater, the, but, but we would phase the units. And, 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 and probably the, the neat part about this is we're going to have several price points, several, several sizes, so we'll be able to be working in different areas and, and work this out. But we would obviously phase something this big. I'm not sure how many phases, but, but as we got closer to that, we'd be able to detail that out. And so maybe too early to ask what your expectation is, but what do you think total build-out time is from A to Z? If it, if it is a phased it's development. Five to a month. I mean, it, it, could, it could go as quick as a year and, and maybe stretch out to 24 or 28 months, okay. depending on. You know, part of the reason I ask that is because of the impact on the infrastructure and in, right. in schools in particular. I know, Robin, the, the chart that's the, the Fulton County yeah. chart, that's <coughs> generated by the, Ful the, the numbers Correct. are generated yes. by Fulton it's, County. It's from Correct. Fulton County um, Board of Education <clears throat> Planner. So they have a planning department within yeah. the board. Yeah, that's why I struggle with the fact that it's three to, <laughs> there was three to 47 or something like that on the student well, impact. Not quite that much. But. Um, three to 14. Three, I think. Yeah, I think three. <laughs> It's yes. still a big it's space. It's a big space. Yeah. Yes. It is. You know what's really interesting about these type of communities, though, um, Voice Say, there's a lot of community development like this. And I did a lot of reading on Milton's website when I was designing an initial concept. Um, there's a big baby boomer influx in Milton. I mean, the age is increasing um, of, your, of your citizenship here. And so we actually are designing them in that in that light, um, I believe you'll have some starter, up, you know, executive couple that commutes to the city. Um, but for the most part, I see it to be um, more of a middle age to upper demographic. So you kind of did that by not putting amenities in to attract families. So is that one of the reasons? Let's say there's not a pool, things space. like that. Okay. Yeah. They, they, okay. They, actually, we're finding that the green space and the open areas are actually more of an amenity than pools than a pool? and some things because okay. they, they become problematic and, and upkeep and some things like that. So the, the green space and the walkability seems to be more of an, of an amenity than anything lately. Okay. Yeah, I just, I'll go on record again, Robin. I just think that Fulton County's got to find a better way than this chart that we consistently complain about because the numbers, <laughs> there is no way to really grasp the number. And to be frank, my, you know, the, the historical math would have said 54 residences I didn't have an answer, ask the question yet about um, anticipated square footages, but it's it would lend itself historically to a family setting where you're not likely to have one or 1.5 kids. You're more likely to have two or three, and then the math is wrong for what they're expecting. Right. Um, the square footage, we actually have run some numbers. Um, square footage can rest anywhere around 2,100 up to uh, 3,800. Okay. Um, you know, and then that impacts the, the parking plan, too, to your point. Whether it's an aged community that is 50s buying this, there may still be some teenager drivers in that, in that community. And to, to someone's questions earlier, I'm, you know, I am concerned about the parking plan because without some space, and it's not depicted on here, which may be by design at this stage of your development, Without understanding where some of that parking could go, I'm concerned that it could be happenstance, and heaven forbid the happenstance is unmonitored, and then you do have a emergency situation, and whether it's first responders in um, ambulance or in fire, they can't get there, um, and, we've, and we've got a tragedy in our hands that we designed. I don't, the last thing I want to do is design a tragedy. Um, so I encourage you to seriously contemplate your parking either being better designated for everybody's ability to grasp mm -hmm. and understand how we can mitigate that concern for safety or contemplate a reduction in a, a, 
a density point here or there to get to the point of dedicated parking. And we, we can come up with a, a parking number if that's something that... that you know, and driveway have. depth is important. You guys have right. addressed part of it by driveway depth, but that... Not everywhere, though. You're you right. know, it's, and, and you hate to say it out loud, but it's the truth about here is the affluence of this area does mean that there are more cars than you might find in other more rural areas mm -hmm. because people have the money for kids to have cars. Right. Um, so it's something we have to take, take seriously when we're talking about this. Okay. Um, we talked about the, uh, you know, one of the, one of the things that staff is recommending that we not approve is the materials. Right. And I don't really have a grasp yet from what you've just, what you've described for me about what the materials would be. I mean, what our, what our design standard calls for today is a lot of natural application of brick or, or well, as brick is manufactured, but right. stone and brick some of those stone. kinds of things. Masonry. Um, Masonry. And so if I heard you correctly, you, you used a couple of terms, um, shiplap siding, and I think it was board lap siding? Uh, board and batten. Board and batten mm -hmm. siding. Uh, now, I have typical a, typical um, specifications for barns, farmhouse, that sort of But manufactured. Setting. It's not wood. Is it? Is it a composite of something? Actually, um, that goes along with pricing these out. Um, in, you know, these are, this was our first rendering. There's a lot more natural wood going to be used in the actual end product. So while, while you may see a lot of white and the charcoal, there will also be some uh, natural um, cedar uh, siding as well, bringing in some of that natural, rustic, modern feel. So yeah, there'll, there'll be a lot more um, of the of the wood siding, the wood board and batten sprinkled between the painted finishes. What's what's fascinating is you can use masonry, you can use brick in Milton, but you can also paint it. So you know, right? <laughs> it's just but texture. one of the things that I want to make sure that we guard against. I think is a, a long. I think Robin like Hardy Plank. Right. Um, what's the manufactured version of that that we were trying to make sure we didn't have? The cement board. You're yeah. I mean, Hardy Plank Hardy is the Hardy board. That, that's yeah. the tie, that's Hardy that the Kleenex it tissues. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's... it's <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, we were trying to limit some of that mm -hmm. and get to some of the more natural yeah. things and... Mm -hmm. Well, brick, although manufactured, is a more consistent look, and you can have an expectation of what the, the finished product will be. I want to make sure that, you know, if, if I mean, you're recommending denial of that, that section, if we were to um, overcome the denial on that, it really probably would require that we create a list. And I don't know that by list today, other than saying, like you said, shiplap or... Oh, what was the second one? I'm sorry. Board and batten. Board and batten. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I don't, I don't know what those are to be able to say I can say. Here, let me. Um, so, uh, so let me just interject here that it's not about being natural because I think it's not very. Uh, I mean, I'm not an architect, and mm -hmm. and um, Bob isn't here. But even in our uh, form based code here in Crab Apple, as well as form based code um, in Deerfield, uh, we allow the the um the non-natural we you don't really other than cedar shake you don't really use natural materials as mm -hmm. as the surface of a building right. so i don't i'm you were starting to say that you wanted to incur i would well, say that you might want to encourage natural colors and earth tones versus wood slapped yeah. up on the side of a building. I don't I'm think struggling that that's with the concepts. So I'm struggling for the right Here. words to describe my concern. But my concern is other. moving too far away from the things that had been contemplated, measured, carefully written into our ordinances so that we don't, by happenstance, create something that we didn't expect by moving away from the things that are in there. I so in that case, your, your suggested denial so is I, probably I in keeping with the concern that I've got. I guess is what I want to get to. And if I were to have any, make an effort to go away from that, to provide the requested um, variance by the applicant, I'd have to know what I'm... Mm -hmm. Exactly. And I think that that's, that's not the reason for the recommendation for denial. But if you were to decide to continue to consider the variance, I think there's, we highly need to have more detail about what, is going to 
beyond the buildings. And yeah. that is, even though that's not the reason for the denial, but I don't think that they've developed their design enough for you to feel, even mm -hmm. if you chose to recommend approval of it, we need something to approve. Yeah. Um, yeah. So even though I didn't say that in the report, I think that's really where um, I don't feel comfortable for you yeah. to recommend approval on something we don't know what you're yeah. approving. And, and that's where I'm going to. I'm, I'm, I'll make a couple broad brush stroke comments, then come back to the more specific concern, and that is I think you guys have got a really interesting concept. I don't think we have anything like this in Milton today, and yet I think that there is a real need for something like this. It bridges a lot of the things that we've expressed as <coughs> concerns in our more recent history about spanning a price point, um, but also uh, making sure that we do something aesthetically pleasing. I think you're introducing a concept that is in keeping, or to a certain extent, like a Vickery application, which is not this, but yet has a Vickery feel to it, a sense of village, which we like to have that sense of place here. And yet you're asking us to test our parameters a little bit on some of the things that you're asking for. And it's not easy for us to go there when we so carefully have built these yeah. things over the years to get to where we are. Um, and I think the, the thing to point out is if, if we were not in the highway and overlay, mm -hmm. that a lot of these would have been, been done and we can work with the city on, on the vernacular that we're looking to do. I think the issue is, you know, throwing a 75% masonry on a building kind of takes away from the design flexibility and the, and the uniqueness and the, and the neat, neat aspects we could do mm -hmm. where, you know, Throwing in board mat, throwing in a variety of materials, lightening up the look, you know, whether it be colors, materials, um, just shadow lines, things like that. But when it's when you're kind of limited to masonry, it, it really limits your design aspect. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we're limited to this 75% because I'm not sure if you're aware, this is zoned urban on top of it. So there's an urban component that we're working within that's not even uh, relevant to residential. So it's an unusual land use, uh, land zoning. Yeah. I wanted to show you the inspiration images real quick um, so that you can get a feel. See that um, texture there? That's a, a patina gray cedar. Uh, there'll be some use of that. that. That charcoal that you see in the rendering is actually wood um, that has been stained gray. Um, a lot of wood shutters. The first slide was a, a wood garage doors. All the garage doors are going to be very unique, but more um, stained wood versus what we're seeing everywhere else. Um, wood lentils. Um, lots of interesting components. Again, the wood lentil, the wood shutter. Again, the wood stain versus... I, I agree with you. I do not like hardy board at all, and I'm, I'm a Florida girl, and we see it everywhere but because of climate, but I'm not a fan of it either. Uh, Wood-framed windows, there'll be a lot of components of that. Um, wood awnings, again, that wood sign, that, that there's pine painted. It's not hardy board. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to show you a little bit of that. That's one of the green space. The little green spaces are really going to be like gathering areas. There'll be a fire corral. There'll be all kinds of little neat benches and seating and, again, more wood. It, you know what's fascinating? If I actually did a study on what we're considering for each elevation of each unit, I dare say we're actually really close to the 75%. We just didn't want to... Um, we didn't want to force that on ourselves um, and restrict ourselves. That's why we're asking for the variance. Quite a few of the units are all stone, all brick. Um, the water table throughout is a stone. Uh, the fireplaces are all stone. There's a lot of masonry in this project. Right. So, Okay, thank you. Um, you know, it sounds like you've already engaged Bob, and that's yes. a really important aspect of this because the creativity that it looks like you've got combined with the creativity that he brings to the table, I'm, I'm pretty convinced that this is um, approved that you guys can find a match. And it may not be that you get the variance that you're looking for tonight, but your continued work with Bob may end up, may end up producing that at a, as an end result. Um, can I ask one thing just on top of that? Sure. I know with... with it's going to be a lot of stone, but with the wood and everything like that, there's going to be more maintenance. Is the maintenance, the exterior maintenance, going to be covered by the HOA, or is that going to be yes. the individual? So that, that gives yeah. me a little more comfort that it, it's, yeah, it's, it's, definitely it's not going to be the individual homeowners. 
you know, the it, HOA will control the colors. They'll keep the wood. They'll keep correct. the stain on. Okay, it's more of a lifestyle. You know, it's, yep. it's a lock and leave lifestyle. Okay. within this. So. Okay, that, that's better. And just to clarify, you did say it was going to be a private road, so maintained yes. by the um, ownership of by the, the HOA. Property. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, I thought I had a couple more questions. Let me ask Robin something while you're thinking. Sure. So just, can you just clarify again, uh, I couldn't remember, what's the minimum uh, parking requirements though? So um, we require two parking spaces per unit. So, and um, I believe when we updated the TR, I'll have to double check that they have to be inside the structure. So um, for the town, but I can double check on that. And so right now there are two Two parking, two garage, two right. two car garage, and two offsite parking per unit. No, no it's no. just two. There's just no two. offsite. No, but we, so, we yeah. In some of the units with the deeper garage, we do have ample ample space for that. And and look, just looking at it, there are we do have other places we can add in some off street parking. Um, I'd probably do it as an alternative material so that it would, would add some interest, not just more pavement. You know, it would be pavers or grass pavers or something. But we can work in some additional parking if that becomes a concern. Yeah, I think I, um, you may already have seen it. I think in Vickery, mm -hmm. um, they have used pavers where it is grass in between right. them. Or yeah, I think it may done been done by private residences rather than as community or a development mm -hmm. um, installed. But I think that's another great potential solution for you guys to keep the, um, you know, more green and, and pervious surfaces. Right. Uh, to think about that. Is there any driveway in the mix that either by length or by width could not accommodate at least one additional vehicle? There are, there are some. Um, and let me clarify what I'm saying by, by width. I'm thinking again about Vickery being the example. There are some families that are three car families. Right. A fourth car would be a problem for them. They park their two cars in the garage. The third car gets parked parallel to the garage doors. And there, and there are some areas where we, we've specifically gotten a shorter driveway because we don't, the problem you run into is if you've got a 12 foot driveway, somebody's yeah. going to inevitably try to fit the car and then it's going to block the alley for everybody else. So we make it short enough so that that doesn't become an issue. So um, like 45 through 50 are probably not right. enough depth to park as a standard. They have to be right. And, and, and like with this cluster of units here, it, it was really a choice. Now I can always pull these forward and get our deeper garage or I can add some off-street parking in this corner and some off-street parking in this corner and get the same aspect. So, you know, that may be the thing that we just work with staff on, on how, to, how to better accommodate <laughs> some guest parking. Okay. And so um, it is in the code, uh, when we updated the TR, it says each unit shall provide two off-street parking spaces within the principal structure. So... Um, you couldn't just have a unit with no garages and then have them, they have to be inside the structure. So read the statement again, please. But it says two off-street parking. Yeah, that's the part that's confusing. Two off-street parking within the structure. What, right. So which is it? Well, I mean, it's stating that you're not parking on the street, you're parking within the structure. Yeah, in the structure. In the garage. In the and garage. Oh, so not off-street off off street off street parking, right. meaning within yeah. the structure, mm -hmm. not, right, right. not off-street parking. Right. <laughs> okay. That's confusing. <laughs> Each unit does have a two-car garage. So we, we covered that within the structures. Right. Okay. Um. So I think there's some other, there's other townhouses further at Bethany Bend that only have one-car garages. And so that's part of, the, I think, the reasoning behind it, too. Mm -hmm. um, all right. I'm almost done, guys. I'm sorry. My question is actually going to be for you, Robin. Um, so in, in staffs, part of the, part of the variance request, the staff is recommending approval conditional, which is the, I guess the VC 18 dash 09. That's relief from what would have been the senior housing. Is that a no, correct statement? No, it's a relief from relief the buffer. From the buffer. Relief from the buffer. So 
Um, one of the questions that came to me as I was preparing then is how do we get from the senior housing part that was on probably the, the TR part of it before, right? right? That's it's not on the, in the TR AG1. section, yes. So that's a non-issue then. So it's really the AG1, there's no... No, it's, it's, it's for the entire part because I, what I said earlier was that if a variance is not utilized within 36 months, right. it, lost it goes away. Right. So we're asking for the variance over again right. for the entire project. Right, to include the AG1. And to include the AG1. It's just pretend it didn't exist at all. So right. it's, we're asking for the entire, you know, for the development itself. So, so it, in VC 18-09, that's the buffer. Part one. In VC 18-09, parts two and three, that's the use of the materials. Correct. Mm -hmm. So where in this is the variance for the, the change of the AG1? That's in the rezoning section. When you talk, so in the description of the application, it says to a request a rezoning, to rezone from TR and AG1 to TR. Okay. Okay, so you're taking the townhouse residential that's, has the underlying zoning or, you know, the densities yep. that exist, and in addition to their additional parcels to, as you go further up Bethany Bend, our AG1. Yep. So we're going to take both those zoning districts and request, they're requesting it to TR because it's a different use, yep. and you're enlarging the subject property. Yeah, okay. Yeah. All right, I just wanted to make sure that that was clear. It was not to me. All right. Um, I think that completes my questions. Any others? For yeah, I have another question. I just wanted to, the 75%, is that per unit? Per wall plane. No, it's like, so if you have four sides, so 75% for the front, the side, side, rear, or even if there was a jet out for every plane, it has to be 75% so every wall plane. plane. Again, is that like one unit or here, you know, you've got three or four units, different sizes, is that all considered one? So, wall? like the front, if they were all, it, let's say if they were all flush and the same, that would be 75 foot, but usually there, there's a little juxtaposition. So, right. it's per wall plane. So, it, you know, it's okay. just pretend they were detached and whichever one plane, it's 75 front, rear, side, whatever. Right. No, the reason why I was asking, because I know you were mentioning that you thought that you were pretty close to 75%. Yeah, because of those end units, each of those end units, which are the largest units, I don't believe in changing materials um, and in compensating that way. So each of those end units will more than likely, there's three sides, right? Because they share the fourth side, they'll be they, masonry. They would meet, so those end units would meet it, but the other units would not. Those so in skinny guys. Yeah, it's, when you have 54 units to try to exactly say which units are going to meet it and not meet it, that's why... The request was kind of a blanket, but um, they will, in all likelihood, be able to meet some parts of Definitely. get close to See, that. See, this is where it gets challenging for us. These little guys in the middle, because we did take Bob's feedback and created <clears throat> elevation shifts from unit to unit. Each wall is its own seventy-five percent right. requirement. Right. Mm -hmm. That's that's mm -hmm. the trouble. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and we we encourage that. So it's you know. Lose some, win some. <laughs> right. but, how, but what's interesting, Robin, is right now, I think, if I let me just restate what I think I heard you say, is right now staff's recommendation for denial on that component of the request before us is really based on a, a greater uh, or a more granular um, definition of what their intended uh, materials are going to be. Had I mean, they provided that, would you have theoretically recommended approval? And it's it's theoretical, I realize. I'm theoretically, I think if you make the argument that I don't I don't believe they still can meet that one um, requirement of they don't have a 
They could do it all in brick and stone. There's nothing physically keeping them from doing that. Cost is what okay, they say. Okay, so well, no. now that that, that may not be no. the preference. It's, it's, it's more of an aesthetic. It's an aesthetic, and that's one of the things I think that people have. You have to look at variances as we have a very tough variance um, standard, mm -hmm. and when you get to aesthetics and. You know, I can make reasons and give good arguments why I think it's a, a good path to go down to. But if I look at what the zoning ordinance requires, I can't say that it meets that. Yeah. Okay. I can't make an argument that they're stuck, right. that they well, can't meet know, that. As we know, one of the th most profound measures we're being asked to make when we're, asked, when we're going to grant a variance is whether or not there's a hardship. And a hardship on that, to be, you know, to be very frank, from an aesthetic, is not a hardship, and so it's hard for us to say that we can grant that without some of the other things that will come along with it. So you can grant a variance; it's not necessarily precedent setting. So it's not repeated time and time again. We've got enough history as a city that we can probably legally defend that, Paul. Right? That these are not precedent setting; they are one-off consideration, especially in the case of a variance request. So we don't have to be fearful of that. But we do have to be fearful is that we're not granting something that is, at this point, without the more granular level that Robin's asking for, something that we didn't intend. But I would, I would propose, although this is not by any stretch of the imagination a, a motion, but it's maybe some guidance for our table this evening, is if we are making a motion that's in keeping with staff's recommendation, that does not preclude them from continuing their effort with, with Bob and the appropriate staff to still secure their variance at the mayor and council level, because you know, we're just a recommending body, um, with the demonstrated information that, that they're asking for, and maybe then secure with your ability to go forward. So it yeah. may not be inappropriate for us to support staff's recommendation this evening on, you know, as it's written, with right. the caveat that we encourage you to continue, and it's actually a motivation for you yes. to continue your work with Bob. Bob and I have already, and Robin have already discussed getting together to talk about our hardship points and what those will be at that meeting. So mm -hmm. we've already uh, dialogued over getting that in motion. Great. So. Okay. Any additional questions, comments, or discussion? No, I guess just <clears throat> in addition to that, yeah, I get the feeling that we're open to that, but, but by the, the code of the variance and by the letter of the variance, you know, we, we kind of have to stick with that for what it is. And again, not knowing what, not having it specified what else it would be. Um, I think that makes it hard for us not to go, to go against staffs because we don't know what we're voting yeah. for. Yeah. Or we don't have any limitations or bear, you know, barriers around that. The only thing I will say is, is, is one of the conditions does say to work with staff and, and making sure that you meet the, the aesthetic requirement within the city. So there is that fail-safe, you know, if you yeah. were to grant that variance, there's, there's another, another actually two layers. I have a staff and then I have design review board. So there's actually two more hurdles I have to get over yep. if, if we're not at that 75-25 ratio. Yeah, but all of which have more teeth than we have. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. I, I, I think you guys have brought forward something really interesting for us Absolutely. to consider. I really um, applaud the out-of-the-box thinking um, for you. this. I think it's a product that could be very successful in Milton, providing we get to that some of those uh, details that need to be gotten to from uh, from future opportunities to be in front of the city and staff. All right. Uh, with no additional questions or comments, I will entertain a motion. Anyone? <laughs> I, I'm stuck. If you guys are stumped, I mean, the chair rarely makes the motion. I can. It's not inappropriate for me with if anybody else, if nobody else is willing to come forward. But I'd rather not. If you guys can create a motion. All right. Well, so, we, <laughs> so the only it has to be a hardship. Can't be any other reason. Well, there's correct. Mm -hmm. Okay, go, go ahead then. All right, so I yeah. I will make a motion. Hardship for all the variances, yeah. the setbacks mm -hmm. and buffers, and the um, uh, the cosmetics we've been talking about. I think we established hardships for some of them, just not all of them. Right. So okay. Yeah. 
Okay. And by way of comment, I, I do think what you put together is lovely. I mm -hmm. think we'd, we'd like to see more of this in, in Milton. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, short of motion from anybody else on the table. I'll be happy to make a, a motion. I uh, recommend that we support um, staff's recommendation for approval conditional of RZ 18 14, <laughs> approval conditional of uh, VC 1809 part one, and uh, denial for VC 18 09 parts two and three, with, with the uh, caveat that we look forward to the applicant working with staff, um, Bob in particular, to see if they can overcome that uh, last part of the denial. I'll second. Okay. Any discussion? No. Ron? Um, I, I having, <clears throat> excuse me, having heard the discussion here, I, I don't believe the applicant has established a, um, uh, a need for the um, uh, uh, removal of the buffers. Okay. Um, I think that the applicant uh, uh, knew of the size of the and dimensions of the property when he purchased it, when expanded it. Um, uh, and uh, the more recent uh, uh, change in the, because of governmental um, redefinition of the floodplain, is, is simply a business risk that uh, I think the, uh, the owner needs to bear. I don't think uh, we should be uh, changing. The, the, since there is no hardship, I just don't see why we should be bailing a builder out. Okay, thank you. Um, Paul, I have a procedural question. I've made my motion, and there's been a second, and we've had some discussion on it. If I need to amend my motion with the fact that there's a second, can I just do that by asking for a withdrawal of my motion to make an amendment to it, or can I amend it without it being withdrawn? Well, an, an, an amendment needs to not be um, something that would essentially defeat the, the main motion. Right. So if it's, if it's truly a fine-tuning, an, an amendment to the motion, uh, you could certainly do that. Okay. Um, okay, I'd just like to amend my motion, my motion then to add the caveat that I would like to... Um, require the applicant to work with staff on identifying some more clearly identified additional parking areas that are con can be considered public parking within the, uh, the confines of the development. Um, I would also just suggest that I acknowledge um, uh, Mr. Gilbert's uh, comments as well. They are uh, appropriate and worth considering, and uh, we ask that Mayor and Council consider Mr. Gilbert's uh, comments as well. Right. So okay. as the, the, now, now there needs to be a, a second for the amendment. If, if, if there is going to be a second for the amendment, now is the time. And then you'll vote on the amendment, and then you'll vote on the main motion. I'll vote on the amendment, then on the main motion? Correct. Okay. I'll second that. Okay. Thanks, friend. So all those in favor of the amendment signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. So the amendment is added to the main motion. Uh, so the motion is now being heard for consideration. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. Let the record show one, one opposed. All right. Um, thank you. Robin, I think that is the extent of our agenda for this evening. Yep, Correct. that's it. All right. So I would, is there a motion for... Adjournment. So moved. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? We are adjourned. And is, there a, yeah, is there a motion to reconvene shortly? Well, how do we, yeah. Do we